Hey, I was asked to um, flip the camera around so you could see outside rather than looking at those plastic barriers that lead out into a pit of like a eight-story drop-off, which I just realized yesterday here. Look, this is where I was sitting yesterday. And over there, if you look right in there, that's like a plastic covering that goes out and just drops. So I see why they put a plastic covering on it. Uh, however, over here, it's more... Uh, less plastic coverings. I think the, uh, the light might be kind of dark, so don't worry too much about that. It's, um, I think the camera is auto-focusing on the background lighting, and so it's a little dark in here. It's not actually dark in here at all. It's very bright. Oops, sorry about that. Oh my gosh, I got some great tech coming. I got a new camera. I just went balls deep into a new audio system, um, which I'll show you when it comes. And it's like a dual, it's actually a four channel audio recording piece of software. It's super high tech compared to what stuff was like five years ago. I remember trying to get like a, God, what was that system called? I had this audio mixer. It was like an eight track audio mixer, digital recording mixer or something. And it was so complicated. It was this big box -y thing that my dad let me use. And it just sat there for like a year when it was when I was living in Ohio about five years ago. Uh, six years ago, and I just never got around to using it. I, it was so complicated. It was so many buttons and switches and mixers and faders and like probably good, but now it's so condensed and simple to use that it's very exciting. Uh, so I'm going to use that when it arrives. I'm really taking to this this blogging on the roof kind of thing, although like I said, it does take up uh, the center of the entire universe, which it's a bit it's a bit selfish, you know. I'll just buy a house that has a really nice roof on it and blog from up there. So my plan now is check over here. Out there uh, is the big roof. It, it, like the roof goes out and kind of sprawls around over here. So I have a uh, umbrella coming, like a giant what do they call like a patio umbrella, and I'll. Uh, I'll be doing my blogs from out there, this podcast, this wonderful, wonderful podcast. I'm trying to think of a lot of stuff that happened. You hear this otter, uh, otter, auto uh, warm beer guy, this guy who last year, he went to North Korea and like stole a sign or was like accused of stealing a sign and North Korean police arrested him and, and held him captive. He was like this 22-year-old American and they, uh, they, they sentenced him to 15 years hard labor, North Korean style, and uh, he went into a coma. No one knew it at the time, but he, apparently he had gone into a coma. They just sent his body back home, his comatic body, and he came back home and basically died. But his parents, his family were saying that while he was here, he looked all like contorted and horrified in this, like, this, this state, and that after a few days, he re it seemed like he'd realized he was home and was able to relax before dying. Um, the Koreans said that he had contracted botulism. So there's this big uh, to-do about like who did what, what happened, where, and like ultimately, you know, 15 years hard labor for stealing a sign is pretty fucked up, but at the same time, you gotta respect, I mean, you gotta respect other countries rules you have to even if they're bad rules they're the rules you know there's like a sense of invincibility that i think has been imparted on people that really isn't real uh, i see it I, sometimes i feel it and things are a lot more serious than they seem you know it's not a video game life's not a video game although it may be a simulation you hear elon musk talking about how the world is possibly a simulation which kind of makes sense because the argument that he makes is if we're able in the future to create a simulation and then run it, that we would have already done it, that it already happened. So if, it, if we could do it in the future, that we already did it, which is kind of not really a uh, justifiable argument because we could do a lot of things in the future that we didn't necessarily do in the past or that hasn't already happened. Like I know that the universe is cyclical and maybe that's the point that he's trying to make. The p point that he's trying to make.
I also noticed I was pointing out to Jeff last night while I was editing the uh, a previous podcast and pointing at this area on my head the, uh, between my eyebrows and how it was creased. You know, sometimes you look at someone and it's, I don't know if it's called a furrowed brow or uh, I don't necessarily, I, I do kind of believe this is a simulation, although I don't necessarily think that just because it could happen in the future is the reason that it has happened. It just seems like it is. I mean, we, we're a sensory machine, you know, we have five senses or six senses or however, sorry, I keep bumping into that, uh, however many senses we have. So that's like a, we're simulating energy and, and pressure and translating it to sound, what we know of as sight. Uh, but it's more just like pressure and vibration that we're calculating. So if we're calculating like a vibration and translating it into what, a perception, that's sort of a simulation in and of itself. Um, this, the crease in my brow, I'll get to it in a moment, by the way, I'm uh, drinking water with grapefruit oil. And if you have never had this stuff, I'm not a big grapefruit, well, I am a big grapefruit fan, but I didn't used to be. It was the more, more bitter fruit. So if I'd, if I'd eaten like a processed sugar and then I tried to eat a grapefruit, it's just so sour, so bitter. But if I don't have any processed sugar for a, a few days, if I don't eat any bread, which is packed with fucking sugar or breaks down into sugar if it's not already added into it, I eat a grapefruit and it's sweet. You can still sense, see that it's bitter, and like lemons are kind of do the same thing. You can actually eat a lemon and taste the sweetness of it if you haven't indoctrinated yourself with sugar. It's it's really w worth it. It's another reason to get off of sugar, just so you can enjoy the taste of a lemon. Um, but grapefruit, good God! So I, grapefruit like, fucking it drives me nuts. It, it pissed me off for so many years, but now with this grapefruit oil, I'm on fire. It's beautiful. It's so good. So I put a squirt in my water. And I get the benefits of grapefruit without actually having to eat one. Probably not all the benefits because I'm not getting the fiber, but I get I'm getting the deliciousness. Makes me want to put more grapefruit oil on there. I concoct. That's what I do. If I was born in 1280 AD, I would have been an alchemist. Probably. Anyway. This, uh, this North Korean thing, you see like in the government now, people are like, we need to go to war with North, uh, who is it? Marco Rubio is like, oh, North Korea, it's just another reason to worry. I'm so annoyed with these, these, these monkeys that are trying to like, always doing something. This is another reason why we don't need people in a paid position of government. This is why people shouldn't be getting paid for government because you really don't need to do that much. That whole organization is just like, what do we do next? They're just like, looking around for something to do, and then they end up making new laws that didn't need to be made, or, or like freaking themselves out about stuff they don't even need to be thinking about. Ultimately, the system, if we can set it up to work for itself, we can go back to enjoying life. And seeing all these people, and they're constantly twisting shit around. Oh my god, I don't even I don't think about it too much. I don't think about it too much, because of the crease in my forehead, so I notice between my eyes, sometimes if I'm really into it, it's the it starts to crease, which is like I'm squeezing my pineal gland, you know? I'm like really thinking about it, and I see like I notice Rogan sometimes on his podcast will go through it. Yep, I brought him up again. I'm going to bring up Joe Rogan every day from now on. Uh, and it just is indicative of like uh, overthought or forward thought. Like personally, when I'm watching someone, I, I would rather see a relaxed forehead, even if they're thinking about stuff. You know, if you can calmly think about it, maybe. But when I'm really focusing, really, really squeezing out the attention, man. Man, man. I didn't used to say man with that accent, man. I think I saw it in a movie or something. They were like, yeah, man. Like, it was Keanu Reeves or something, Keanu. And he was like, sure, man. Yeah, man, I'm into it. No, man. It's my Ohio roots. You know, I didn't realize that talking about a bad cat was an accent. But I guess I have one. It's a Northeast Ohio accent. To, to, okay, to me, it's a Northeast Ohio accent. Sounds like, no, okay, I, I heard the accent and the word accent just there. But it's a Northeast Ohio accent. There's no accent there. That was purely American. I'm wrong, I know, but that's what it seemed like. <sighs> Sometimes you just got to enjoy the green. Now, there's a lot of greenery up on this roof. I think it's doing me good. 
I think it's a plant for my apartment. What's big in the news right now? Um, the fact that we don't need a president? I think so. I think so. Uh, oh yeah, I'm supposed to, I, I should really bring some topics to talk about. Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, no one, like the, the media, oh the media, uh, this is the media, you know. This is the media. This is the mainstream media. YouTube, Google is the mainstream media. How many billions of views does it get every month? Mainstream, baby. It's mainstream. Uh, but some media outlets are talking about Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. I, I shouldn't laugh about it, but it is like a funny kind of ridiculous clown show. Like, why are these two old people the, the only option? Why were they even considered like a binary? Like, I know people know that politics is not a binary system, and it was never intended to be a binary system. At least um, American politics was set up so that anyone could form, could run for president pretty much if they got enough support. So you could have tons and tons of parties of people all working together. And then comes along this, this weird, detached uh, voting cycle, which is also kind of weird. Like, I don't think we should be voting in cycles. I think we should be voting whenever the fuck we want to vote. You don't have to wait. Daddy's not going to spank you if you talk o out of turn anymore. You know, it's 2017 and we're adults, man. We really need to take control of this system. So we're faced with these two weird old people that think that they're trying to do stuff like it's 1970. And uh, it's, it's like it's so funny that it, it makes me hiccup. Like it makes me spin my tires in excess. I know. I know. Just slow down, get some traction, and then we'll move forward together. That's all we got to do. I've been doing planks. I need to do more planks. If you're familiar with a plank, it's a, it's a yoga pose. You just hold the position. It's almost like you're doing nano push-ups. And then you start to feel the blood flow, like flush and flow down in your arm, like up and down your arm. You can feel it just flooding over the muscles, building tissue, depositing chemicals and nutrients and just growing. And you can even watch, like if you're doing push-ups and planks long enough, you can look over at your arm and see it bulging, like the muscle just bulging forth. So fucking valuable. I didn't read any news articles today before I started talking, so I didn't really have a, uh, a focused purpose or thick thing to bitch about. Let's see, what's funny to me? Well, people standing on their head. Um, I always get a kick out of that. Uh, I also think it's funny, those upside down faces. You ever see a picture of like an upside down face and how fucking weird it looks? Oh God, it's so weird. It'll set you off really bizarre like the nose is in the in the same spot but upside down or something crazy like the I don't know if it's everything's in the same position but it's turned upside down <laughs> man look that shit up because it's gonna blow your mind it was weird as fuck uh, I like butts like human butts they kind of they turn me on um, I'm a big fan of cats I like cats a lot cat butts are kind of funny how they stick their tail up near just walk around and show that ass I think that uh Back in like the, the olden times in Africa, when humans were butt monkeys climbing around down from the trees and running for their life, that the mastodons dominated the scene. Giant bull elephants just owned the savanna, owned possibly bears too, but for some reason you don't see a lot of bears in Africa that I know of. But I think the mastodon just tore shit up. These wild, dangerous bull elephants, because they're so smart, you know? And that humans were just, just a, just a, a bitch. And cats, you know, cats struggled and, and they fought. And then one day, humans and cats started working together to take down the elephants because the cats could go for the back of their back legs, like their, their Achilles tendons, and just cut. And then the elephants would fall down. And when their head hits the ground or gets close to the ground, the humans can come out with spears and finish them off. 
And then they built this, they carved the Sphinx out of a mountainside. God knows how many tens of thousands of years ago. I thought it was like 13 or 15,000 years ago, but now it's looking like it could have been 30,000 years old. It's hard to tell. There's a lot of like ancient erosion on the Sphinx that predates any of the erosion from like the pyramids and stuff. So I think it's the, it seems like the erosion on the Sphinx comes from about 13,000 years ago, 12,800, what is 11,600 BC, 11,200 BC, basically the end of the last ice age when the global flood occurred and, well, the last global flood and just poured over the Sphinx. But it could have been a time before that when that area of the world got a lot of rain before it was a desert. Oh, I just saw a picture of, I think it's the Sahara with a bunch of snow all over it. it it's a cool picture. Check it out online if you haven't seen it. Like snow in the desert, very weird to see it. It, it kind of looks like peanut butter ice cream. Like two things I would never think went together. Peanut butter and ice cream? Because like peanut butter gets cold, it gets hard. And if it's creamy in the ice cream, then you know they fucking did some crazy shit to it in a lab. Added some bizarre chemical. Bortrate, that's not a real chemical, but some, you know, some dumb chemical that makes it so it doesn't freeze. That you're supposed to eat, smile, and be happy. Although last night I had a a bowl of oats. <laughs> That's me being unhealthy. And I put a bunch of walnuts in it. I try not to eat money oats because it's a lot of gluten. And it's like you might as well just eat a bunch of bread if you're going to eat oats. Kind of similar. And the, But then I poured some maple syrup in it. And I overdid it. I overdid it because it was late and I was stoned and drunk. Um, I, I had a Bloody Mary day yesterday. Oh, God, I love Bloody Marys, man. In fact, I kind of want to... I'm gonna, mm, I had a lot of bloody last night. I had one and a half bloody Marys, and it was the first one was before I had my ice uh, frozen, so it was kind of warm. Um, then I had a couple beers, which was nice. Jeff brought over some uh, uh, Guinness, new Guinness beers. Guinness is breaking into like a blonde, and uh, there's another kind of Guinness that they're coming out with now, which is nice to see. I mean, I love the original Guinness is my favorite beer by far, by far actually. It's so good. But I put the maple syrup in the oats, put the all, a bunch of, I mean, just a fucking handful of walnuts into that bitch, into that bastard. Let's be uh, agenderous right now. Agentrific. And it was delicious. Then I poured a bunch of, well, at first I poured the water in it, and I really overdid the water. So it was like a bowl of water with some oats in it, a bunch of walnuts, got the grade B maple syrup in there, and, uh, I let it sit. I was like, well, that's a lot of water. It's too much water. What am I going to do? I'll just let it sit because I know that oats, if you let them sit in the water, they'll slowly expand. And I was like, maybe it's not too much water. Maybe it's it's too much water. I found it. I thought maybe it's not too much water. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's just enough water, even though it looks like too much. Because a lot of times I'll put some in, I'll be like, that's the right amount of water. And then they'll expand and it'll be dry. I'll be like, oh, I didn't put enough water in. So this time I put, I put too much water in. So I thought, and I was right. It was just a, it just had about this much water left over, so I drank it, and it was sweet as fuck. So I put too much maple syrup in there too. But I think uh, sometimes you might want to, if you're gonna drink alcohol, maybe it's good to have a little sugar with it. It's definitely good to have some salt with it, which is why Bloody Marys are so good. Tomato juice. I had my, I got some vodka. You know, it's actually pretty good vodka. It's kind of a sweet vodka. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to look to see what kind of vodka it was. I don't even give a fuck what kind of vodka it was. And, uh, you know, horseradish. I'll take giant spoonfuls of horseradish in there, put some black pepper in there, and some olives, which unfortunately had calcium chloride in it. Disgusting as fuck. But, I mean, if you look at, like, olives at the store, at the grocery store a lot of times, like, not or not organic. Well, I'm going to get back to this whole organic thing in a minute. But if you see these, a lot of, like, olives, they have cal calcium chloride, amongst other bizarre chemicals in there. And I don't know if the calcium chloride's to make it yellow or make it not stick together or to preserve it probably a preservative but i don't want to eat chlorine if i don't have to i mean that's what's in chloride is chlorine the calcium i guess is okay so you know, i have no idea but i i usually avoid calcium chloride i couldn't find any olives under seven dollars a jar for a small jar that were didn't have calcium chloride so in the future i may have to splurge and get the big ones the good ones Organic, you know, you go to like Whole Foods, which apparently just got bought by Amazon. Hallelujah! Uh, 
talk about drone delivering your uh, groceries. That's what's coming, is you're gonna be able to order all your groceries online. They're gonna be delivered to your door by drone within like two hours from a nearby Whole Foods. And uh, they have like olive bars, which are, if you've ever gone to a Whole Foods olive bar, nice work. And if you haven't, check one out if you get a chance. So talking about organic, let's get back to what really matters, organic olives. All, or, all olives are organic, by the way. So wood is organic. Uh, water is not organic. So you get your GMO, which means genetically modified organism. Um, your GM celery sprayed with Roundup, you know, the glyphosate, the active chemical in Roundup, Monsanto's flagship uh, herbicide. And it's still organic, although it's not USDA organic. So don't, get, don't buy into the mind fuck. They, they commandeered the word organic. Organic used to mean that it was carbon-based, so all food is organic. Well, maybe you could maybe, maybe disprove that, but for the most part, all food is organic. But it's not necessarily USDA organic. And why do you have to put a label on something that hasn't been treated with chemicals? Why not have to label the stuff that you did extra stuff to? Like, the original shit shouldn't have to have a label. The original shit should just be called celery. Then you should be like poisoned celery or like herbicide treated celery, you know? That's, that's the backwards thing. That's like what, the word prohibited. That always drove me nuts. Why is there a word for something that you can't do? Why, why doesn't prohibit mean you can do it? Pro means good, it means forward, yes, pro. This is when I was a little kid, they'd be like, yeah, uh, crossing the street is prohibited. I was like, oh, so I'm supposed to do it because it's pro? And they're like, no, prohibited means you can't do it. And I'm like, well, why did you make a word for that? Why not just make a word for something you can do? Wait, maybe, I'm, maybe this doesn't, this isn't the right context for this, but I think you know what I mean. Like, it, like illegal. Illegal is just the word legal, but with, a adjective, with an ad, additive to it. Illegal, like there's no word for something that's not good. That's the, op the word is for the good thing, and then you make not the good thing for that. So like what pro hibit is just such a fucking weird word. Uh, but humans are weird people. They're weird creatures, man. So maybe we need to have these weird structures in place. One of the things I found as a little kid that confused me that took millions of years of evolution to come up with, that you have to tell people, no, you can't do that thing. That thing, there's a word for that too. It's called prohibit. Hibbit, what does that mean? Hmm, interesting root, hibbit. I need to have a lexicon on this, on my show. So I've got all the, all the tech for, uh, for guests. I'm excited that I have some upcoming guests I'll be letting you in on as it happens. I probably won't talk anything about it until it actually happens because I don't know that it's actually gonna happen until it happens. I just believe it's gonna happen, but it's not good enough.